Stop the war! No, no, war on the Iran! Stop the war! Stop the war! No, no, war on Iran! Stop the war! Stop the war! Welcome to today's rally on unfortunately yet another disgusting anniversary for the United States. The ninth anniversary of the U.S. war on Iraq. The war that our president tells us is over, even though his Pentagon just a few weeks ago asked for three billion more dollars for this supposedly ended war. We all know that what the Syrian government and what the Iranian government are doing to their people is wrong. We all know that, we all agree. But those people have a right to self-determination and a right to determine what's gonna happen for themselves without interference from the U.S. government. This is a culmination of a whole series of the U.S. building up its empire illegally and unjustly. There's a basic law that one country has no right to invade or attack another country unless it's been attacked first. The government of Afghanistan did not attack the U.S. My friend has already spoken about the donor takes. For the last many, many years, Pakistan is under drone attacks. So far, more than 300 drone attacks have taken place, and more than 3,000 people have been killed, innocent people. And they say that we are going to kill the terrorists. I don't understand with uh, the drone uh, from 20,000 above, how can they recognize who is a terrorist and who is not a, uh, uh, the, the terrorist and innocent, uh, innocent? So the question is, how the American go there killing the innocent people? Number one, they are responsible for this criminal act. And number two, they are uh, violating the sovereignty of a sovereign nation. It's, it's ridiculous that uh, we allow our government to continue to waste billions and billions of dollars every year to brutalize and subjugate the people of Iraq. And it's, it's, uh, it's time to stop this. It's time to hold the administration's feet to the fire. And even though they are just politicians, uh, we still have to hold them accountable. Anyway, Obama drones on while the Bill of Rights burns. That's the problem. <laughs> The justification for increasing war in Afghanistan and Iran and Yemen and Somalia, you name it, Uganda, Australia, it's always the claim that we are engaged in an unending war, the so-called war against terror, whether the official language is that or not, an unending war that encompasses the whole world. Drawing from that premise, our civil liberties come in second. And this government, a continuum, as Andy suggested, from, from Bush through Obama, has jettisoned fundamental rights of assembly, due process, and so on. We're coming up against this in the plans for the protest against NATO on May 20th and on the days around that in Chicago with permit issues and other issues threatening our right to legitimate assembly. Uh, at the extreme of this, we have had the appearance of the Attorney General in Chicago at Northwestern Law School just a few days ago, claiming that the President of the United States has the right to authorize the execution without trial of American citizens anywhere in the world. That's about as far as it goes. That goes beyond torture. People were worked up about the torture issue under Bush. Now we have presidential kill orders openly quote, justified by the claim that the constitutional guarantee of due process doesn't mean, as our attorney general said, judicial due process. You can have your due process in the secrecy of CIA meetings on drone attacks on 16-year-old boys in Yemen, and that's your damn due process, and be satisfied with it because we're defending you in the war on terror.